History Network, host of the African History Network show. It is February 1st, 2022. It's the first day of African American History Month, Black History Month. And I am here with my show and Nawasha Edu, who are the co-founders of Acoma Day. They're going to talk yes. about Acoma Day, the Acoma Day holiday, the sacred science of soul mating. So how are you all doing today, Hotel? Oh, Hotel to the family. We're doing well. I'm happy to be here and ready to talk about our baby. Acoma Thanks Day. so much for having us. Yes. Oh, yes. No problem. No problem. Acoma Day. We've known each other for a couple of years and I've been following yes. you all on social media and uh, wanted to uh, do an interview last year, but it's just uh, so hectic. We didn't get a chance to do that. But I definitely wanted to get you on to talk about uh, Acoma Day. You, you, you know, a lot of people um, they celebrate Valentine's Day, but Acoma Day, it's a is a uh, cultural alternative. And it deals with the sacred science of soul mating and is African centered, African based. So tell us about a coma day. Wow. So, um, <laughs> yeah, a coma day is a cultural alternative to Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. It's an international holiday now, um, celebrated in 16 countries by mm -hmm. black people in pockets all over the place. And um, it's a seven day holiday that is designed to have us really look at um black love in all its manifestations so starting okay. with the intimate relationship but then moving through with the community relationship and the um the brother to brother sister to sister and how we interrelate as black people and so um you know we 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 uh accommodate came as divine inspiration in 1997 and mm. we started but then codified it in the way it is today in about 2001 so that's why we're saying it's the 21st um incarnation or, or annual celebration and okay. we've been sharing it around the world for the last 21 years with great reception because black people are the progenitors of love um we're the progenitors of a week-long holiday in february in the ancient times which the festival of lupercalia which then became <laughs> valentine's day is based on so right. Europeans saw that Africans were celebrating love festivals during the third week of February because globally it represents the fertility, the most fertile time of the year. And so this is the time that most uh, babies were being um, conceived and the love was at an apex. And so um, the spring, the renewal, all of those things that represent new life and new beginning we're at an apex in this particular week, the third week of what is now February. Of course, it wasn't February then. Right. Um, but so Europeans in modeling that had a week long festival called the Festival of Lupercalia. Lupercalia. That festival then got um, shrunk down to one day and associated with uh, St. Valentine's. And now we call it Valentine's Day. So a coma day is actually reestablishing an ancient tradition and putting it in context for black people because we're not romantic we're meritic <laughs> or we're a comic so we okay. want to celebrate our culture since we are the progenitors of um, the celebration of love okay so when we talk about lupercalia the ancient wolf festival okay yeah. and and it's, it's it's in reference to uh lupa who was the she-wolf who uh uh nursed uh romulus and remus who were said right. to be the the founders of uh, rome. uh ancient rome in in the mythology of ancient rome okay so when you when you talk about the um fertile time of the year the third week and what to, today is february what now is february february based upon the gregorian calendar right um, th that fertile time of the year talk about that and and you and you reference that to ancient african uh celebrations in yeah. what would be now the time of february talk about that because a lot of people don't understand this history there well there you know the, our history is very uh -huh. long right so yes. there, it's hard yeah. to condense it into short periods even like the roman the roman history and the greek history sometimes things get blurred and mixed up even though mm -hmm. we're talking about hundreds of years we're talking about thousands upon thousands of years um but Traditionally, when we are just speaking of a more cosmological understanding, we're saying that there's a there's a time for beginnings, a fertile time. So for us, we're in North America. It's kind of hard to see that February would be a time of fertility. We typically think of it as the what we know as the spring would be right. a time for fertility. 
Um, right. But this was really ensuring that women would give birth, right? So the manifestation of human fertility, but also just for our ideas. So everything has this kind of um, gestational period where right. your spirit has a gestational period, your thoughts, your emotions, your, you know, plans. And that's really what it's speaking to. This idea of making something Christianized is where we kind of see how Lupercalia had to be cleaned up in order for, you know, um, what we know today as Valentine's Day, we needed to have something that was more religious or something that was a little bit more tame <laughs> than mm -hmm. talking about a wolf nourishing <laughs> yeah. twin. But this idea of nourishment is also just a feminine principle, which I think is really interesting because um, Valentine's Day tends to be promoted as a feminine holiday, like a, a woman's holiday. Right. Where right. if you don't do something on Valentine's Day or for Valentine's Day to honor the woman separate from being a mother, separate from being a partner, you know, just this idea of passionate love. Um, mm -hmm. But it's actually the history is one Misogyny. that's the opposite of what it would have been as African, you know, history. So for indigenous African culture, a woman is celebrated as the other side of the same manifestation of God, not as some lesser than or not in a misogynistic way. But for Valentine's Day, a lot of the ancient history is one of abuse. It's one of neglect. So physical abuse, mental abuse, women were actually beaten to promote right. fertility, even though we know that that has nothing to do with being more fertile. And that's actually yeah. where the term febra comes from, because the skin that they were beating with mm -hmm. was called febra. And that's right. where February comes from. Exactly. So, um, exactly. you know, knowing those misogynistic histories is actually ironic that they try to promote Valentine's Day as a woman's holiday when it started out as women's abuse. Right. Right. And it, they, they would uh, take the, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like the skins of the wolf and they would shred mm -hmm. and beat the women with them because it was it was said to induce fertility. Yes. Of women. OK, so the uh symbol the akoma uh yes. the akoma symbol. explain the akoma symbol okay so this is the symbol mm -hmm. that is the akoma and you know i want to say that we have to understand that symbolic language has many many layers a practical um reference would be if you look at the golden arches of mcdonald's Mm -hmm. Somebody looks at those arches and say, oh, that's horrible fast food. Somebody says, oh, that was my first job. Somebody says, oh, I love shakes. Somebody say, oh, they got the best fries. Mm -hmm. These things are layered. Um, and this one symbol means multiple things to multiple people. So African, the language of spiritual culture is symbolism. And Africans are the progenitors of many abstract symbols. The yes. Akoma is an abstract symbol that represents the, the, the sacred science of soul meeting. And so the anatomy of the Akoma is such that men and women at the bottom are in the spiritual plane, one connected as one, separated at conception to go through their separate um, rites of passages, which we call hump day today, the hump. We call it hump day when you got to get over the trials the trials of your character. You're being tried to test yourself and to come out um, being true of character. And then they reconnect in the physical to be um, what we call a soul mate. So now this is an abstract idea that was, we were taught in ancient culture is a literal symbol so that for every man that exists, there is a feminine part of him. To every woman that exists, there is a masculine part, literally. And as Nawasha said about Christianizing some of these concepts, this is actually where the idea that a man or a woman comes from a man's rib or a man comes from a woman's rib, as it was in ancient times, but through um, patriarchal Abrahamic religions, the woman had to come from the man. He couldn't have came from her, but right, he right. Have made it like that. Um, right. This symbol represents that divine unity. And so it had many principles of patience, flexibility, endurance, consistency, um, those things. And one of the sayings of it was Niakoma. So now, as you can see here, this literally was a gift from brothers and sisters in Ghana, but Europeans saw the symbol on clothing coming from Africa and said, what is it? They mistook one of the principles, which is Niakoma, 
which means to take heart. And they literally took it and mm. brought it over here and started calling it the heart. So now when we see this on social media or wherever we see it, we don't realize that we're actually looking at an ancient African symbol that has now been reduced to an empty symbolism of, um, you know, so-called romantic love. But it's right. actually a divine symbol of high science in spirituality in African culture. Okay, so the it's uh, the symbol is uh, the Akoma, the Akoma yes. symbol. And this is where Europeans get the idea of the heart as in relationship to romance, things like this. Because your heart doesn't look like that shape. Right. Oh. Okay. okay, so all right. Everything has Go ahead. An abstract form and a concrete form, even things that are only abstract, which this is just the understanding from an indigenous perspective. So mm -hmm. when you have an idea, even if it's to build, so if you're making architectural plans, everything that is physical starts out as something that is mental first. And then thanks to the emotion, you get some movement behind it to either really build or really create. Even people come in this way where there is a idea of a person first, a purpose, right. a mission, and then someone is conceived and then someone is born into the physical. So this idea of an acoma is an abstract symbol. We're using the word acoma from the Akan people, which is um, West Africa. But this symbol, you'll see it in any original black culture. So you can see it in Australia. You can see it in different parts in Africa. This, as it's shaped like this, is the acoma from the Akan people. But it's still representing this kind of abstract understanding of unification, of source, and reunification. Yeah, we don't understand abstract symbols because all of the symbols that we are um, co uh, commonly equated with in geometry are actually ancient abstract symbols. Like the square represents morality. So we say, stay on the square. You know, it represents right. divine character, four right angles. So treat me right, act on the square. The, the, the uh, Merkut or the triangle pyramid represents leadership because in any direction you turn it, whether it's an isosceles or whatever kind of triangle, the point goes forward. And so all the um, elements come to one point to project in a particular direction. Circle represents um, social divine unity or divine growth because there is no beginning or end and it expands at the same um, length and width simultaneously yeah, and so be all of center. these right all of these symbols have divine meaning but again because our education has been dumbed down and decontextualized right. we don't understand what these symbol meet these symbols mean so we're calling this the heart but as you said well you learn very quickly the heart don't look like this so right. what does this actually represent and that that oneness coming back to um, oneness uh, represents the sacred science or what we call the love trinity of I am he, um, she is she, but together we are we. And so there is a trinity in a relationship dynamic where I get to be myself, she gets to be herself, but together we are a third thing that is unlike us as individuals. And that's something we really need to understand to make relationships work because there's room for all of them to coalesce and coexist. Absolutely. All right, so that, that's a lot of valuable information that people are commenting as well. We've got John uh, John on Facebook and Herbert and uh, It's Me, uh, it, let's see, It's Me, she's on YouTube and Mark on uh, uh, Facebook. Okay, so um, the Acoma Day holiday started did it start as a one day holiday then expanded to seven days so yeah let me let me explain that a little, little context so mm -hmm. um a coma day holiday came to me in 1997 as divine inspiration okay. um it, it it came to me i discovered the acoma and i was working with a lot of different leaders and people that were prominent in the black community um specifically dr khaled abdul muhammad okay um, yeah. i learned about the acoma and I was talking with Khalid and I was telling him, I have this idea that I want to create a alternative to Valentine's Day. And he told me, you know, go with it. You should do it. He was at the time working on Janame, 
which was the cultural alternative to Thanksgiving for black okay. people here in the north in the hills of North America. Right. So um, I, I began and I and I started and I started to share it with the children was my thought. Um, so I was a counselor at an alternative school. And so I was sharing it with the students there. We started having a celebration annually and I started sharing it with my friends and everybody was starting to take take with it. Like, I, I really love this idea. I didn't know this thing was called the Acoma. I thought it was the heart, blah, blah, blah. So I went to dinner with Khalid one night and I was telling him, I really want to take this nationally, but I just feel like something is missing. So he was telling me, encouraging me to do it. And we were having a conversation and somebody took a picture. And that picture is an iconic picture in the history of Acoma Day history. Okay. Um, but he was supporting me and telling me, go, brother, you should do it. This is what black people need, et cetera. But I found something was missing. And I really found out what was missing a couple of years later, because a couple of years later, I met with Nawasha and we started, we made it and we came together and she brought the feminine energy and through her um, observation, we kind of extended it seven days and we got the color system, like all the symbolism, as I said, um, symbols are the, are the language of culture and spirituality. And if you have a culture or if you have a spirit, there's a symbol. So anybody talks about a religion or a culture they're from, they're going to show you some symbol, a cross, right. a rock, a moon and a star, something. They're going to show you because symbolism is that language. So Nawasha brought a, a feminine energy, a symbolism, and then we moved it from, in 2001, from one day of February 14th to seven days um, with seven virtues, seven principles, and seven symbols. So we it's really a took to it. absorb in one day. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot to <laughs> okay. do. With. But then we did that through divine inspiration. And it was later that we found out through more intensive study that this is the way it had started. Actually, by studying Lupercalia, we found out that Lupercalia was based on, as Greece and Rome, um, mm -hmm. Rome was actually based on Greece and Greece was based on Egypt. The right. ceremony was um, a week long from the beginning. So we found in divine order, we were just tapping into our ancestral DNA and our memory of knowing those things that we didn't even know that we knew. And, and, um, and there's a, there's so a rhythm. that's how it went that comes in sevens or in a lot of different numbers, but one of the symbols or the, the rhythms for completion is seven. So this okay. is why people say that seven is a divine number and this shows up in a lot of different things, but um, in order to embrace something, any kind of transitional period, you kind of have the coming of it, the middle of it, the end of it. So this number seven is just really being able to have a number of completion around this topic. So that's why a lot of, of um, we're saying ancient as in comedic or, or original indigenous ceremonies would have lasted four days. Right. Some people still do that today with their wedding, yeah. with different cultures. It's not just a one day or a couple of hour ceremony. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, here's the first wedding on this day. And we're still doing this on the third day and the fourth day. So there's some remnants of that still happening today. And yeah, many African nations, you, you marry for seven days, the baby doesn't take a name for seven days, right. seven colors of the rainbow, seven musical notes. Seven is completion, and it represents God in African culture. And so um, the lucky number seven, you know, um, mm -hmm. so we're all in divine order with that, with the coma day. Okay, now you you, you referenced um, Lupercalia again, and I, I wanted you to talk about that because, uh, yes, a lot of Greek culture is based upon, a lot of Roman culture is based upon Greek culture, and, and the Greeks learned and stole from ancient Africans, especially in, in ancient Kemet. So was Lupercalia originally a African celebration that was then modified by the Greeks? Talk about the relationship there. No, I think I think Lupercalia is a, a, um, a weak attempt at mimicking something. But just like okay. we see in, in modern day um, European culture, oftentimes you are... So like they say, in every lie, there is a small kernel of truth. Right. So if, if I imagine I'm going to a highly advanced civilization and I'm seeing that they're um, celebrating love for a whole week and, and, and it's a love uh, party where people are really dealing with high virtues and principles and it is the celebration 
of the sacred science of soul mating and love and, and, and whatnot. Now, when I bring that back to my culture, if my culture is antithetical to love in the first place, and we don't really have the expansive knowledge of what we just saw, we imitate mm -hmm. without really having a depth of understanding. Right. And I think the, the Grecian holiday, which I don't know the name of, we have not found that yet, had more content because the early Greeks were essentially African in the earliest, earliest Greeks, I'm saying, <laughs> um, that then became codified in the Greek gods um, on Mount Olympus. Mount right. Olympus is Africa, you know, so when you <laughs> contextualize that, you have to understand that historically. So um, then their children are the Romans. And as you said, the Greco calendar that we're celebrating right now, um, right. 2022, is 2022 years from the takeover of Africa. So it's always ironic that Black people celebrate this. It's like you're celebrating the loss of your ancestors or the wounds of your ancestors. But in any event, when the when the Greco when the Roman culture took it, they started to codify a lot of rituals that were. Um, right misogynistic and mm -hmm. so they were picking women's name putting putting a women in the hat names in the hat right and picking right. them out right and once they picked one then you actually get to have that woman now this mm -hmm. is problematic because this woman might be married or she might right. be someone else and so another thing they were doing with pubescent girls who were just coming into their cycle and their menses and their ability to reproduce they were taking the wolf skin, which they call Febra, mm -hmm. dipping it in blood, stripping the woman down, and then beating her right. with it and right. turning her red. Now, mm -hmm. this to them is why red is one of the symbols of um, Valentine's Day. But for us, red in African culture always represents the ancestors. So the Chinese borrowed that. And whenever you see red, it represents eldership right? Mm -hmm. Or it represents a certain knowledge. So in African culture, red, like the red, black, and green flag represents that. But to them, it represented a, a misogynistic assault. And sometimes things become literal. It's almost right, like right, right, exactly. about working with children. If anybody knows children, mm -hmm. you know, or has had a conversation with a child, if you know what red represents, the trickle down of that without the same amount of experience and just being, again, symbolic language, what you hold on to can definitely be that women bleed, right? The blood is connected to the heart, which is right. a vital understanding of life force. So this is sometimes why people were sacrificing to begin with, right. sacrificing certain animals in the name of um, fertility. Even when you saw that in indigenous African culture, it was done in a certain with a certain intention. So the the same thing that you're watching can be completely different when the intention is different, or the understanding of the spirit of the animal, or the purpose behind what you're saying is the gesture behind sacrifice. It's not just let's you know kill all of the girls who are who turn twelve, <laughs> but there's a meaning behind some of the things that somebody might have applied to an animal, then gets applied, you know, generally to children, to women. And then if you already don't like women right. and girls in your culture, <laughs> then you're saying, hey, we have to beat the women for fertility. It could have easily been, we have to beat the men to be more fertile. But right. without the understanding, it becomes right. symbolic again that the woman is the one who grows physically when there's a baby. So it must be all on her. When okay. we know that it actually takes two people to create a child, those were some things that were not exactly understood to the level that we understand them now and to the level that we originally understood them. So there was a lot of confusion for the Greeks and the Romans about even who could carry a baby. At some point, right. they felt that men could be the ones to carry. Yeah, they a baby. wrote about that. So there was just some confusion and not knowing about life to the same extent and for the same amount of time to see cycles go turn over, over and over and over. So it's right. like it's like they got a Cliff Notes version of something. If anybody remembers Cliff Notes back in the day, mm -hmm. like a yep. clip, a YouTube clip version of something, um, a TikTok essentially, thirty seconds <laughs> right. of what could have been thirty million years, right? right? So it's hard to actually, even with the best of intentions, which I think. 
some of the original students like a Socrates, mm -hmm. there were some students who wanted to take information back for their culture, but then they were separated from original thought between them and their students. So right. when their students report back, because that's what people were doing with the Greeks, a lot of their students were writing about them and reporting back to them. Things right. have another layer of distortion, just like when we play those, you know, pass the gossip telephone games across, like from one person to the next person to the next person, things exactly. are screwed. And you're right. left with maybe the most pivotal parts like red and a coma, and it has something to do with sexuality or, you know, but we lose right. the science of soul mating in that story. And when you got a crazy nature, then everything goes left. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So uh, I want to flip over to your website here and, and I want yes. you to explain how do we celebrate a coma day? Because it's seven days. Yes. A lot of people are used to Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day is, is one day. If it mm -hmm. falls on a weekend, you may do something that weekend. So their, their website is a coma house initiative dot com. And we're going to bring up the website again. Everybody okay. go to their website. They have helpful information there. They also have a guidebook for a coma day. They're going to tell you about as well. Yes. So um, so how do and you get the coma day uh, guidebook here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, guidebook into the sacred science of soul mating, a cultural alternative to Valentine's Day. Okay. So ex explain for the seven days, February 14th through the 20th, how do you celebrate a coma day? Yes. So for every every um, day of the holiday. So the idea is that first that you're celebrating love and you're mm -hmm. celebrating love from the position of your cultural um, center. So okay. We're very bullish about words and terms. So we do not, black people should never be saying romantic anything. Um, that's reference to Rome and Rome. Right. It's, it's, right. it's reference to Rome and um, Rome, you know, invaded Africa and pillaged Africa and became mm -hmm. a nation state because of that 2000 and 22 years ago, Greco Rome. Um, so, but for the celebration of um, a coma day, you're going to celebrate your love with your intimate partner, your family, and your community. And we outline a lot of different ways to do it, but each day is themed. So there are seven virtues and seven principles. So like, for example, um, the first, the first uh, virtue is flexibility, right? And so it's a theme because in our relationships, we need flexibility, right? But at the same time, we need to extend flexibility with one another. So people have been asking us 20 years from around the world, so what do I do, what do I do? And we say this, you're gonna take these seven virtues and seven principles and celebrate love from, from the dynamic of your culture in the way you do best. So for example, if you're into physical movement, let's just say on a, on, um, a coma day, you, you do your meals, you do um, gift giving, but say you take a, a, a Abu Aryan Ka class or what we commonly call yoga today, okay. and you increase your flexibility as a family, as a couple, what, whatever. We're asking black people to take, to, um, to get the book, to really look at the seven virtues and principles and apply your self-style energy. So there's, there's some, some consistent things like meal, um, a vow that you're gonna say as a family or as a couple, then an activity which is guided by the um, principle or virtue. And people say, oh, I looked at flexibility and I saw this. I looked at endurance and I saw this. You're going to create a theme because, again, these virtues and principles are symbols around black love. But you're going to do the things that you do or want to do with your beloved around the concept of love. You're going to buy black when you can. You're going to support um, black businesses but you're going to do things with a certain thought, speech, and action alignment that is cultural. Like, for example, one of the things we say in here, Valentine's Day, um, the flower business, right, is right. what's the number of the, it's like. Um, I'm not sure just flowers, but overall Valentine's Day is a 18 to $19 billion holiday right. in North America. And so a lot of that, States. a lot of that is people getting roses and flowers. Now, this is antithetical to African thought. In African thought, we do not give flowers, we give plants. Why? Because as soon as you cut flowers, 
you're actually giving something dead. Even though it smells good and it looks nice, we all know that in a couple of days, it, it's, it's already dying. And in a couple of days, it will be dead. So you're giving a symbol of death for somebody as love. Everything that you give as a, a, a cut flower, a fresh flower, you could give as a potted plant from a rose to a calla lily, which is our favorite flower. Anything you could give that as a potted plant. Now, a potted plant lasts eternally almost. As long as you want it to last, it right. will seed, it will go through the cycles of life and then rebloom and rebloom. So now you've given a gift that is going to last perpetually versus giving um, a gift that that dies. I know they just did a, a documentary on Janet Jackson and she had a song where she mm -hmm. said, what have you done for me lately? She said, you gave me flowers. They, they, they died. Nice try. Like, you know, <laughs> so it's an empty symbol. And we don't understand that it's, these things are empty symbols that we're doing. But even that I was coming from, you know, our ancient culture of creating um, gardens, right? So there's a difference right. between creating a garden or a labyrinth and being able to experience all the great smells. We here, again, we're in, in the, on the Northeast of the United States, it's cold. <laughs> it's like right. snow outside. So we're cutting flowers and transporting them and trying to give the gesture, but we forget that everything we're doing is symbolic. If we're really cutting something that has died and we're slowly watching it die, you either would have to do that over and over and over, which is how people have their industry selling um, millions and millions of flowers, or you're saying that what you're giving in love is actually on its way out. And this is what a lot of people feel. Sometimes we don't realize when we do these empty gestures that mm -hmm. there is a magnetism to the things that we're thinking and talking about and you know believing in that actually shows up in our intimate relationship. So Masha mentioned the virtue, but all of the principles are unifying principles, which this is where the science of soul mating comes in. Every single principle for every day you're going to be coming together to unify. So we have the first principle as unified purpose, which means that's the time to clear up what's your pur what's the purpose of your relationship? What's the purpose of your life? These are things that you do have to revisit every year. And we're just a little bit thrown off. We think about it sometimes in January, maybe at the beginning <laughs> of the year. I think we think about it maybe at our birthdays or as a couple, we might think about it in an uh, anniversary. But this having a love holiday is a great time for renewal of all unifying principles. What's keeping you together? What brought you together? What's keeping you together now? And what's the future of your union? These things have to be revisited, which is why Masha mentioned saying a vow. You know, a lot of people only say their vow one time when they get married instead of right. saying it multiple times to remind themselves <laughs> what they've bought into and what they believe in. So these are the things that we're saying that a, a love holiday would be much more than just a flower industry, a card right. industry, a jewelry industry, you know, um, an entertainment industry, because people don't spend a lot of money, but that $100 to $250 is creating 19 billion for one day. And right. people's relationships don't, do not feel renewed with $19 billion worth of energy behind them. Some people break up right before Valentine's Day <laughs> or right they don't after. want to yeah. spend the $100. Yeah. And then some people are very disappointed. By you don't come the correct, gesture. it's over. <laughs> so, you know, these are the things that we're looking to correct. We right. want to celebrate love. And we are the, as Mancho was saying, the progenitors of holidays. What is a holy day and what virtue, what characteristics, what are we supposed to be reminding ourselves of? So a lot of times people want to leave celebrating Valentine's Day when they find out about some of the um, background, but they don't <laughs> have an alternative. And they also, right. it ends up being a, a severing, right? Instead of just a realignment. So we don't want to sever our celebration of love or our gestures for ritual. We believe in ritual because of what Masha was saying, the symbolic language, the gestures that we do, they mean something. So when you cut yourself off from the gesture, that is one you want to cut yourself off from improperly celebrating, improperly right. talking about something, but not of the sentiment of love and not yeah, of absolutely. the science of soul mating. We are the people who brought soul mates to the planet. Black people were the first stories, but we say things like romantic or we talk about other cultural understandings like twin flame and these other things that came from soulmate. Understanding. Right. right. Soulmate. Right. And so we outlined that stuff in the book. The book 
is really three books in one little book. The first part of the book talks about the state of black relationships. The okay. second part of the book really um, juxtaposes Valentine's Day next to a coma day and shows you why Valentine's Day is psycho and crazy and why you could celebrate <laughs> love. If you are going to re remove something, as Nawasha said, you want to replace it with something of equal or greater value. And when you understand historically that our celebrations of love were there already and first, then you're just returning home. Um, we want to properly contextualize the acoma and let the world know Every time you see this on social media or wherever, it's a um, African symbol. But then the right. third part of the book, because we are therapists, is over 28 exercises for you to do with your um, your yourself, your spouse, your children, your family, to really um, make your love vibration at a higher level. Because our ancestors said, if you just um, hear something, you're going to remember 20% of it. If you see it, you'll remember like 50%. But if you do it, your memory retention will go up to 70 to 90%. And if you do it enough, you become it. And so that's the part of cultural initiation. So all of our work at a Coma House Initiative, culturally based counseling consulting firm is psychological reparation. We got to repair the damage that's been done. Right. It's relationship education. We got to teach people how to do things the right way, best practices. And then it's cultural initiation. Come home and be yourself, celebrate love, party, dance, do foods, do vows, exchange gifts, um, celebrate in the home and celebrate in the community. We outline how you do that. And we've literally been doing it around the country in different places in the world for the last 20 years. So um, we show you how to do all of that in the book, our website and, and, you know, the Black Love School, other things we share. And people are teaching us as the years go by, because whether it's London, whether it's Ghana, whether it's um, whatever, you know, like these things have become part of our Akoma Day kit. And they actually came as a gift to us from brothers and sisters in Ghana. But people have done retreats. They have done um, Akoma Day uh, community celebrations where all the family is involved. And then they've done community day, uh, I mean, Akoma Day retreats where it's just intimate couples. We have been doing a celebration in our town for the last 20 years, and we have the music, the entertainment. We've honored um, various dignitaries for the Acoma Wings Awards. Um, Queen of Fool was there in 2010 as the first lifetime recipient of the Acoma Wings Awards, and then Dr. Africa was there the next year. And um, we, had, we, have Francis, we have Francis Crest Welsing slated to come, and then she returned to the ancestors. And so Right. We just have had a lot of support and outpouring from the community. We've been, we created Acoma Day, but we've been learning about it just as much because so many people around the world, whether it's Tanzania, Ghana, London, Chicago, Detroit, they've been coming to us with things and saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. And, and, and so, you know, right now this year, there's a couple in Arkansas doing a Acoma Day retreat in some treetop, um, they got these uh, they got these bungalows that's up in the trees in Arkansas. And okay. so they say, hey, we're going to simulcast y'all in so y'all can speak to our couples and um, while we're doing this Acoma Day event. And so it's just a beautiful thing. You know, it's it's, it's just growing and it's, and it's just beautiful. So we're honored to be, you know, to have the, it come through us. Absolutely. So I want to go back to your website and then I want to show yes. this two minute video that you all have also okay so um at your website uh, uh so people go to it a coma house initiative.com and they see you here as well um and then uh Mancho and then washa and then we scroll down so you have the acoma day guide into the sacred uh science of soul mating you have it in ebook format and you have it in soft cover format um and one of the things you, you were just talking about is that uh the book includes uh, outlines over 30 exercises to unify couples families and communities to achieve their divine purpose but it, it but it also talks about how to celebrate a coma day as well correct absolutely right because what we found as counselors is a lot of times we, we're missing the relationship education so this is the perfect opportunity to do some things, right? So have some conversations, do some projects, things that are meant to realign you as a couple, as a family, or even within yourself. So when we talk about soul mating, 
we talk about soul a lot as an acronym for self, others, understanding, love. This idea that we have things we need to do to be better in relationships is very true, but it's some of the things it's not, um, all of that is not abstract. <laughs> so sometimes in our present culture, we think, oh, I got to go to therapy for 10 years. You know, I have to do all of these things when really we're just missing a kind of education. So when it comes to the unifying principles, we're talking about what are things that you can do that are going to be annual that you can revisit, visit for the first time and revisit that will renew your relationship every year at this time. And that's what you can use a holiday for. So it's definitely okay. a celebration, definitely um, the renewal, but also we need healing around relationships now. You know, we're not um, starting at the zero foundation. We need to heal things. We need to understand something about ourselves. We need to come together with the right mindset and the right heart set, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, um, I want to go to, I want to show the video. We uploaded it here to YouTube. Uh, I want to show you uh, your two minute video dealing with what is a coma date. And then I want you all to uh, tell us about the uh, Black Love School as well. Okay. okay. So let's see. Let's let me flip over to this just a second here. All right. So we have it on our YouTube channel. Let's look at this. Yeah, yeah, I call coma, coma, coma greetings. This is Marshall and Marsha of the Coma House Initiative, Initiative to, to talk, talk to you about, about a coma day. day. <laughs> and what is the Acoma Day holiday? So, so first, first we want to introduce ourselves. We are the creators of Acoma Day. We're authors of the Acoma Day book, a guidebook into the sacred science of soul mating, which you can get on our website. We want to introduce this concept of Acoma Day as it is today. It has evolved from its original concept in 1997 to a seven-day holiday as of 2001. And the reason why we're, so, we're offering Acoma Day is as an alternative to Valentine's Day. So there are no other people on the planet that are as celebratory as black people. And in that, we don't want to take away celebrating Valentine's Day and not celebrate love at all. We are the progenitors of love, of the science of soul mating, and of passion and of intimacy. So Acoma Day offers seven days with seven virtues and seven principles to help ignite your passion and help restore your love in its proper cultural context. And it's built on the Akoma, which is a, a, an Adinkra symbol from the Akan people. That represents the science of soul mating, oneness, divine partnership, unity. It has other symbols that you can find out about in the Akoma Day book. And it has <laughs> celebrations. <laughs> and so we celebrate Akoma Day at home or in the community. And so we bring our people together. We acknowledge those that have done great things in their thoughts, speech, and action around love. Of course, we have a marketplace. We have slew of entertainment dealing with the spoken word, um, song, dance, and even our beautiful fashions. We definitely uh, offer a community ritual that we can come together and have psychological reparation, relationship education, and cultural initiation. We say our Hesse. And we spread, we spread love, love around, around the world, world as the 16, 16 countries that, that recognize a Coma Day currently. And a Coma Day, Day is black history in the making. making. So, so find out about a Coma Day, Day, pick up your book, a Coma Day, Guide to Sacred Science, Science and Soul Mating, and Cultural Alternative to Valentine's Day. 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 Learn, Learn more, more and, and celebrate, celebrate black, black love. love. Yeah, Coma. All right. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So tell us, what does the greeting Nia Akoma mean? That means take heart. So yes. again, it's not a literal thing where you want to um, reach in and snatch somebody's heart. But what it means is that you should take my emotion, my love, my fondness, and all of those things that the heart represents with you when you go. So when we are greeting each other, we're saying take heart. And I think we know that the heart has a symbolic abstract meaning because we have hundreds of expressions like I memorize this by heart. Um, I wear my heart on my sleeves, you know, like all of these things. We understand that the heart really, even for comedic culture, represented our soul at the, the judgment um, scene or the, the, the weighing, weighing of, of the, the heart, heart ceremony. Right. So this idea of take heart just means you're taking a part of me, an essence of me that has the best intentions um, with you when you go. And so we say um, we have Hesse or sacred chants that say, um, a coma will move. My heart is really into you. Or if we say um, 
Akoma Intuaso, that means my heart is uh, magnified and greatly amplified because of you. And um, Akame Akoma, like I really love your style. And so these are, um, when you have your Akoma Day um, celebrations, especially the community celebrations, we say these chants um, seven times to, to represent uh, you know, the, 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 the completion of, of love culture. And so I just wanted to say that because um, I saw somebody ask, the, the virtues sure. of Acoma Day are flexibility, patience, faithfulness, consistency, endurance, fondness and goodwill, and the seventh one is um, forgiveness. And if you want to say the principles. So the principles are those unifying principles that we talked about for the science of soul meeting. So unified purpose, unified labor, unified transformation, unified fruit, unified body, unified um, soul, unified mind. And so we definitely have seven virtues, seven principles, and seven symbols on your accommodate altar. And I'm so glad to announce that <laughs> we have this uh, Akoma, uh, Mushimawa Akoma, which is the accommodate uh, candle holder and a kit. We okay. have for the accommodate kits and they look like this. We got them in all different colors. So they got the seven wow. candles can be held here. And then you got your uh, Acoma goes in here and you put this on your altar. And for <laughs> seven days, you're going to light your candles, the pink, red, and white one in the center, representing Black love, um, Black culture, and Black unity, and Black initiation in the white candle. And so, as you know, when we go in Africa for initiation, we always wear white. And so mm -hmm. this is a part of your Acoma Day um, altar and the other six symbols that are on it um, we talk about in the book. And it's all complete now, thanks to the brothers and sisters in Africa. And then we, we, we got the kits. I've been for like, for the last eight, nine years, people have been asking me for these kits. It took a long time to get them manufactured, but now we got them and we're shipping them out around the world so that people can have a complete home altar or community altar around the coma day. And we could get this black love on because we sorely need black love. And that's what we deal with in the black love school. Absolutely. So, so the uh, Acoma kit, the the the, the candles, uh, mm -hmm. Fema, it, it's made in Africa. Well, the design is partly design. African, but the manufacturing right now is in America. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the design came. A part of the design came from Africa. It's a long story. I got to come back and tell you. About it. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. I, hey, if it's made here in the, in the U.S., that's that's good also. Okay, yes, yes. that employs people. So yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so Susan on Facebook says she has to bring this to Hawaii. Uh, yeah, Randy sure. said, the, "Randy said the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know." Uh, Great Escape said, "Beautiful." Uh, let's see. Uh, Kat Tavis said, "This is beautiful. I'm glad I found out about a coma day. I always learn so much when I tune into this show." Uh, Mark Kelly said, "This is magnificent." Uh, so people are responding. Everybody, visit their website, uh, purchase the book, support them, and they're about to tell us about the Black Love School. Also, their website is a coma a k o m a a coma house initiative dot com a coma house initiative dot com. They have the book in. Uh, ebook format and soft cover format. So tell us, explain what is the Black Love School? So we definitely need relationship education because it's a lot of crazy stuff going on out here. The that. Manoverse, the the psycho uh, psycho brothers that's out here, um, um, led by Kevin Samuels. The the, 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 the uh, Kevin, Kevin Samuels is my brother, but you know, hey, I got I'm a therapist, so I got to call it like I see it. Um, right. Psycho feminism. It's a lot of stuff that is not indigenous to African culture, but right. we are the progenitors of marriage. Um, we had the first marriage documents. We didn't always do that, but there was a time that we did that. And we need to know what we call the art and science of black love culture. So the art is the abstract, the philosophical or the feminine energy of love and the science of the methodology, the practical techniques um, and the masculine energy of love, we call the art the the why, and we call the science the how. So we need to know why to do black love, and we need to know how to do it. So we mm -hmm. created the Black Love School as an internationally based online platform for black couples and singles to come and learn about the art and science of black love culture. 
Um, we do that by doing two master classes a month and then two live calls a month. So every other week, a new master class comes out. And then we have a live call of singles and couples. And right now we have about 11 countries in um, in the world where black people are from Ghana, Tanzania, London, you know, all over the states, the islands. And we come together and work through the hard work assignments because we are actual therapists and we believe in not just talk, but actually learning how to do things in a best practice way so we can change. And so the Black Love School is designed with the seasons and we do um, the classes based on that. So in the spring, we have spring into love semester where all the classes are about new beginnings and how to bring new energy into established relationships. The summer is the heat of love where it's all sex and intimacy. The fall is um, the harvest of love where it's all about friends and family and the community support around or damage around the, the intimate relationship. And then where we are now is um, the culture of love where we deal with high science and high spiritual wisdom of ancient African culture in the intimate relationship because our people brought many divine, deep, pro deeply profound concepts to the world that we no longer know. And so the Black Love School is just a beautiful Black love party. And it's currently right now um, $42. Somebody said they don't see the candle holder on the site. <laughs> the candle holder is new. It just came out like... We it's just got a hundred of them, um, okay. and they're selling like hotcakes. So uh, we didn't even get a chance to take a picture and put it up. I showed it to some of the people, and I, they just sell it. I don't even have a, a product code on the page yet, so it's okay. not there. That's why I showed it here because it's, it's brand it's, new. Um, it's coming. All right. So yeah, 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 it's coming. All right, absolutely. Now, what's the website for the Black Love School? Uh, actually, you can click on the Black Love School right from where you were on the website. So, okay, um, I think it was right before the picture of the book. It okay, just says Black go, Love School. Let's go that back little picture back. will give you a pivot to the courses right here. So, okay, yep, right in the middle there. Yep. yep. When people go to the and website then, of ComaHouseInitiative.com, you scroll down. And yep. you'll see culturally based relationship empowerment, and you'll see Black Love School. Click right yeah. there. So if you click right there on Black Love School, you'll see a, a list of classes that are individual topics. Basically, that's your the relationship education and, and what would be the cultural initiation. Um, and if you're interested in the monthly membership, you can join as the King's membership or the Queen's membership and have access to all the courses that are already in there. And then also access to the live Q and A's that we do on Zoom, where we're talking mm -hmm. about those the topics that Masha just said. So like now we just talked about African life cycle development two weeks ago, and in two weeks on next Friday we're going to be talking about polarity. So some of these are concepts that we have brought to the planet, but that we don't get in our formal education through school or you know in preparing for a relationship. So even with the best intentions we can mess something up. <laughs> right, <laughs> so we get our heart broken and then we're, we're a little bit jaded or overprotective the next time. And there are just some things that we need to know, like how to communicate with each other, how to, you know, um, Court, greet, mate. how to have difficult conversations. So really this is what that cultural initiation and relationship education is. It's understanding love, the art and the science, the how and the why, through an original paradigm that's meant to help you, which we have a lot more tools accessible for us at our for disposal, help right? Than people think. So this is why we're discussing things like mentalism, polarity, you know, even the acoma and symbolic understanding. You don't get those things in traditional counseling. Um, right. You don't necessarily get the strategy and the ability to manage yourself the way that you would in initiation. Um, so we're marrying those things in, in the honor of holistic culture and in the honor of holistic relationships. You need to really partner those things within yourself and within your relationship. And I'm a therapist and I can tell you what you don't get in therapy is your culture. You get everybody else crazy psycho culture and you don't get your own. And you don't know that the word psych comes from the sahu, which is the transmigration of the soul. They don't even tell you that um and i've worked with you know i work with a lot of therapists we are now beginning to train therapists because therapy is the new black but black people are about to get exploited 
when they run to therapy thinking that they're going to get healed and they're just going to get more jacked up. And so we're offering, we do offer um, counseling services, but the Black Love School is $42 a month for the monthly membership in the spirit of Ma'at. Or if you don't want to join a membership, and I don't know why you wouldn't, each <laughs> individual class, you can go in here and look at the list of classes and say, oh, I just want that class for $42. But if you're going to spend your $42, you should join the monthly membership because you could cancel at any time and you're going to get a quadri of classes in those four semesters that are um, audio visual classes with heart work assignments. Then you get to come together with black people who love and respect one another, led by a spiritual cultural foundation. And we can have conversation around that, um, around those classes with black people around the world. I don't think that there's anything like it in the world that I have seen. Um, and so we're honored to help share it and bring it to the world, but it's a beautiful experience um, that we have in the Black Love School. So we encourage the listeners to check it out. And this is what we say, we say accommodate every day, you know, right. like for Valentine's Day, a lot of times after the holiday, it's a letdown. <laughs> but truthfully, right. we need to have loving principles and we need to have support around love every day because it's such a major part of our life we sometimes focus on business and we sometimes focus on health but we are very fractured even when we think we're doing something for ourselves if your relationships are not happy and that can be your relationships with siblings with neighbors with family parents definitely the intimate all other areas of your life suffer because it's a weight that you know, relationship is really the most important thing. And a lot of times we're just pacifying ourselves in other areas. So it's so important to get whatever your idea of a relationship is. We say the relationship of your wildest dreams. It wouldn't be a dream for you. It wouldn't be in your heart if it wasn't possible. But we have to erase the, the doubt. We have to build up our skill set and we have to know how to relate to each other. So it's a really great um, group therapy kind of dynamic, but it definitely has the educational aspect, as Masha said, the heart work. This is the homework that we assign. So that's really what we're coming together to talk about every two weeks. Uh, so I want you to just talk briefly about your mm -hmm. credentials as a therapist, because there are a lot of social media therapists, a lot of YouTube <laughs> therapists, okay, who don't know what they're talking about. Right, right, well, right. The I most know of, you do the most of, that they talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Most, most of the people talking about relationship fall into two categories. People <laughs> who are new in relationship and, and really have excited. and really excited for, for the three and a half months that that relationship <laughs> is going to last. <laughs> Or people who are bitter as hell about relationships and they banging on everything that happens. But we both there's hope a small group there's of a, qualified there, yeah, there's, a, there's a small group of qualified professionals, <laughs> but even fine. with them, a lot of them don't have cultural context. They mm. say that they're culture they're doing culturally relevant, but it's just like painting Santa Claus black is not culturally relevant. <laughs> Right. Actually, the further you go back in history, St. Nicholas is it's actually it's black. Um, exactly. So, exactly. so, so it, it, you, it, you know, but, but for us, we are both um, master degrees uh, counselors. We have uh, masters. Both of us have master's degrees in human services with a concentration in clinical counseling. But then we have over 21 years together, but then separately, probably about 40 years of cultural initiations into different systems, whether it's um, African Nubian Kushite, Kemetic, Nile Valley, um, we have um, um, Dagara, um, uh, Batswana. And so we have a, a, a litany of um, traditions. And me, just being on the street, I just study with the Moors, the Hebrews, the nation, the, everybody, you know, and Nawasha has traveled the world, really um, getting firsthand account of seeing cultures up close and personal, living in brazil spending time in africa you know um and, and so we the energy and the symbolism is right. another area that i have have studied and right. have a 200 hour certification in strategic intervention so we have traditional so-called traditional right in counseling but even for us when we went to counseling as an early married couple we saw things that were missing right so we were able to compare cultural initiation with like more, I would guess, academic education and, and practices. And then also just the understanding of gesture, symbolism, ritual as a global theory, 
no matter what indigenous culture it comes into, many things are very similar. So this is able, just us able to recognize what's missing in counseling, what's great right. about counseling, what's missing in our culture, you know, what's what's great about our cultures. We still want to connect <laughs> right. after all the things we've been through. We just don't know how. But really what we understood is we all get an initiation. Even in our, our systems now, in education, there's this onboarding process and you're a freshman. When you're a counselor, you're you're working with someone for your first couple hundred hours, right? This idea of mentorship or of guidance, not mentorship, but guidance and initiation happens in a lot of different categories, but it's not happening in the intimate category. It's not happening with parenting. It's not happening with, with uh, you know, newlyweds or newly partnered people. So everyone's on their own when it comes to relationships, and that's not how it should be with relationships being the most important part of our lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. So once again, people can join the Black Love School. It's at acomahouseinitiative.com. Right. Check that out. Right. And then I just want to bring this picture up here. We talked about That's Saint right. Yeah. So St. Nicholas, because I, I deal with this and, uh, you know, I've been uh, doing lectures dealing with the history of Christmas for going back right. to about 2012. Right. And, uh, it, and I and this is from one of my slides in my presentation, but also I, I deal with this in the, the class I teach ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade. But, yeah, the, a lot of the early Christian saints were Africans. Right. And Absolutely. No. And St. Nicholas is a lot of white people going to be. Uh, mad, but uh, Saint Nicholas was African. Okay? Saint Nicholas was African, and the further back you go and look at the paintings of Saint Nicholas, the more African he appears. The blacker he gets. That's right. That's exactly. right. Exactly. That's All right. right. Um, well, look, this has been a great conversation. Uh, people visit their website, AcomaHouseInitiative.com. We know Acoma Day is coming up February fourteenth through the twentieth. And for a lot of people, this is uh, new information to them. They haven't heard of a yes. moment before. So this is uh, excellent. Now, are you going to have like any special broadcasts for a coma? Yes, day? We're, we're going to um, um, be doing because these last couple of years we've been virtual. Usually we're running around the country, um, but these last couple of years we've been virtual. So I think there is an event that we're going to be doing physically in Philadelphia. Um, okay. on the 12th, is it or the 13th? I'm not sure. 13th. The 13th, um, is it on your website? Um, uh, no. we're, we're, we're about to put it up because we're okay. realizing the details. Someone is hosting us to come to their event, so this is not our normal event that we hold, okay. but we travel around and you know, we've been all over the country doing um, coming to other people's Acoma days and, and celebrating, and so we'll be putting that information up possibly by the end of this day, um, once we confirm one or two things. But on our page, um, we have a fan page called Acoma Day Every Day on Facebook platform. Um, okay. We're going to be sharing um, videos. Um, every year's uh, Acoma Day has a theme. This year's theme is rituals of love. Rituals are the specific ways that you do a specific thing that taps into your, um, that becomes part of your behavioral memory but it's also encoded in your ancestral DNA. And so we do things like come up with a dance called a Harlem Shake, and then we find out 60 years before it was the Boston earthquake, but then you could go right. back 200 years and see in Namibia, they were doing that dance and calling it something else. And right. so how do we know these things that we don't know? It's our, it's our um, ancestral memory. And so this is what we have um, spirit technologies um, African spiritual technologies, we were working with um, the recent elder uh, Maladoma Some in initiation, Dagara Dogon initiation. Mm -hmm. um, we were in a two year initiation with him going up in the mountains, learning these things. And, um, and you know, and spirit, as, yeah. as many people know, he just returned to the ancestral realm. But right. um, this year's theme, every year, every day, we're going to show um, a virtue, a symbol, a gift idea, a, a, a people around the, the uh, country and world that are celebrating and a ritual for each day that will help you deepen your love celebration. So anyone who wants to take that love ride for seven days, you can you can find us on the um, Accommodate Everyday fan page on Facebook. And um, um, other than that, in the um, the um, event in Philadelphia, we're just doing a multitude of interviews that are just everywhere. 
And okay. this one is the first, so we're excited to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're kicking off African American History Month. That's right. Black History Month uh, today. And we know we celebrate it all year round. That's but right. and, and because we, we, that, that's what Dr. Carter G. Woodson said. Dr. Carter that's G. Right. Woodson, and I've studied Woodson, you know, co founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, which is Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, September 9th, 1915. And he was an educator. And he said it didn't make sense to just teach our history one week out of out of 36 That's okay right. this school year he said uh for uh negro history week african-american history month that that was supposed to be the time of the year that students actually demonstrated what they have been learning year round right and and these are supposed to be celebrations we focus we have these great celebrations during february but we're supposed to continue that year round and there's an annual theme each year that's right american history month this year is black wealth and health what black health and wellness there's been wow. an annual theme going back to 1928 wow. okay so, so a lot of the ways that we celebrate it we just you know focus on on the, the same 15 20 sanitized negroes every year but don't that's really right. that's purpose right that's right behind african-american history month so that's right that's a lot of work that i do uh um, all right well look guys look it's been great everybody uh support them uh acomahouseinitiative.com we've been talking to uh my show and the washa edu of the black love school and they are the co-founders of acoma day absolutely. all right guys well look uh we'll talk to you next time and uh mod hotel take care have a great day okay neon coma all right neon coma peace peace all right, stand by everybody. Okay, so hey, uh, be sure to follow us here on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel. I'm the founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. And if you like this type of information, um, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. And um, be sure to register for the online classes that i teach on saturdays and sundays dealing with african history uh class number one starts up february 5th uh ancient kemet the moors and the maafa understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com we have the information right on the home page this is a 10 week online class that I teach. We deal with thousands of years of history and we deal with what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Class number one starts up February 5th. It's 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, guest speakers, all of that. Uh, we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You go back and watch them anytime. You still have access to the full class even after the class is over with. So a year from now, if you want to go back and watch the entire class, you can do that. Uh, the class is regularly $140. $130 is on sale, $80. I just posted the link here on the thread of the broadcast or visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Click right here for register here. It takes you to the next page and then uh just uh click on enroll okay as soon as you enroll you can start watching bonus content now there's going to be uh, uh, uh you're going to get 15 of my lectures as a bonus in digital format uh with this as well okay when you register for this so my uh michael m hotel 15 dvd bundle pack uh you're going to get that in digital format uh when you register uh for this course okay and it's 15 of my lectures. We have it in DVD format available at our website. You can order that separately, but uh, you get the digital, uh, the, the, you get my lectures in digital format uh, as a bonus uh, for a limited time only when you register for this class, okay? And then the, so this class is uh, Saturdays, Saturdays, February 5th starts up, uh, it's 10 weeks, 10 consecutive Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. The second class that I teach is on uh, Sunday, and this is from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Okay, and I'm going to refresh the screen here. From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Okay, so let's go back to the website because I, I updated the website last night.
and I just had to refresh the screen. So class number one starts up uh, Sunday, February 6th. And with this class here, this class is $80, also regularly $130. We have a special bundle pack. You can register for both classes uh, for only $120, a special bundle pack. There's bonus lectures of mine that you get as well. So this class um, I created and I just started teaching in this class, um, the second one, I just started teaching this um, in late 2021. I think it was maybe October when I first started teaching it or something because uh, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, I've been teaching that class since 2017 on and off. And there's a critical piece of history that we really need to understand from the Civil War through Reconstruction, 1865, 1877, Jim Crow era, going to the 18, 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s, World War I, World War II, Great Migration, 1915, 1970, Civil Rights Movement, Black Power Movement, okay? So it's so much information to deal with. I didn't have enough time to really put it into the previous 10-week class understand the transatlantic slave trade what they didn't teach you in school so i created this second course so we can really focus in on this period of time so each class we go through and analyze about a 10 15 20 year period of time we start out in 1803 with the louisiana purchase and understand how important the louisiana purchase was to the US. and the u.s gets uh 828,000 square miles of land uh for about 15 million dollars the louisiana purchase comes about because of the haitian revolution and the haitians are beating the hell out of the french and uh france is uh, about to, is close to going bankrupt so they sell the land here that they stole from native americans and african people who were already here they sell that to the u.s it doubles the territory of the u.s at that time and then we're going to see how uh, the Missouri Compromise of 1820 and how th that was an effort to organize this land coming from the Louisiana Purchase. And it allowed Missouri to come into the uh, Union as a slaveholding state and allowed Maine to come into the Union as a free state, the, 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 Missouri, the Missouri Compromise of uh, 1820. And we're going to see what leads up to the Civil War taking place, uh, Missouri Compromise, the um, uh, Mexican-American War of 1846-1848, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo of 1848, where the U.S. gets uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Nevada, all from Mexico for about $15 million. And Mexico loses about a third of their territory. And then we're going to see the, the, the disputes and, and the reorganization of these different uh, territories as well. Some are going to be slaveholding states. Some are going to be free states. And we're going to see what leads up to the Civil War taking place. OK, so we go through and look at this period of time, really starting in 1803. All right. We look at Manifest Destiny. We look at the Alamo, the attack on the Alamo, Texas becoming um, it, winning its independence from Mexico in 1836. Uh, we look at the Spanish-American War, 1898, and we go through and, and analyze this history, okay? And it's the same format, PowerPoint presentation, book references, articles, video clips as well. From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. So visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have the information there. You can use these classes with your children. I, I, I don't do a lot of cursing. It's not crazy. It's not vulgar, things like this. Um, I would say the content is PG-13, and um, the information is going to blow you away, okay? And when we, especially when we look at 1865, 1968, we better understand what's taking place right now, the disputes uh, of the attack on critical race theory, the suppression of the teaching of uh, the history of slavery and uh, white supremacy and racism in schools, these attacks on this, banning books, all this stuff, okay? And the voter suppression bills that are being pushed through Republican-dominated state legislatures. So far, 19 states have passed about 34 laws. You have over 400 voter suppression bills in, uh, in about 49 states, and Republicans are pushing this. But when we go back to uh, after Reconstruction ends, we see um, 18... 
uh, 90, Mississippi, 1895, South Carolina, 1901, Alabama. We see these uh, voter suppression laws being written and written into the state constitutions, the poll taxes, literacy tests, in some cases, property ownership requirement to be able to vote. OK, so we see history repeating itself. But we have to understand this and understand that politics is legal distribution of scarce wealth, power and resources and the writing of law, statutes, ordinances, amendments and treaties, their adoption, interpretation and enforcement and, under, and, and look back and understand this history and see the domestic terrorist attacks on African-Americans uh, to, to keep us from voting, attacking African-American elected officials, because during Reconstruction, there were about 2000 african-american men who became who, who who got elected to public office and state legislatures and the house of representatives and even the u.s senate like hiram rhodes rebels in 1870 became a u.s uh, african-american u.s senator from mississippi all right so when we better understand that history uh then we understand what's going on today and how to fight against that all right uh a people's history culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past in the present and the future to meet the needs of the community Okay, so you can register for those classes at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All of my DVD lectures are there, digital downloads, etc. And if you like this type of information, once again, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. So uh, we have the information right on our website, uh, Cash App tag. This is our official Cash App account, dollar sign, the AHN show, S-H-O-W. When you go to it, it says Michael and shows my picture there. These other ones here are fake African History Network Cash App accounts. Those are, those are not us. I did not set those up. Our tag is here, and then you can click right here to support us through PayPal. Okay, so we broadcast. Uh, my radio show is on Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight. Eastern Standard Time, the African History Network show on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation WFDF. We're doing a special broadcast right now, but I'm on daily and then Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, download the iHeartRadio app. You can listen live or watch us on Facebook and YouTube. And then we rebroadcast these shows uh, throughout the day. Click right here to listen to audio podcasts of our shows. Also, 10 different audio podcast platforms. You can click here to read articles that I've written. And then also you can advertise with the African History Network as well. Uh, if you want me to do a presentation for your group organization for African American History Month or any other time, email me at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. Ahnshow, S-H-O-W at africanhistorynetwork.com. And then also if you want to advertise with the African History Network, you can email us um, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com as well. Okay. All right. So we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Uh, remember, right now, it's correct your own behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Peace. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.